today. No, Dick, I think uh, John McEnroe is playing extremely well, but Jimmy Connors seems to be playing with a completely new desire to be number one. I, I've never seen him play as well so early in the season as he's playing at the moment, and they've had some great matches in the past, and I really feel like today could just be one of the best matches we've seen from both of them. Connors beat Carolinas in three sets, a sensational match here last Last night to reach the finals, McEnroe went against Lendl and beat him in straight sets, although the second set was ended in a tiebreaker. There's no question that these two men are by far right now the best players in the world, considering that Borg has taken a bit of a vacation. Yes, I think, uh, Borg, as you say, Borg's on a vacation, and if they play on a clay court, Borg is still the premier player in the world. But on an indoor surface and a lot of other the outdoor, more the faster outdoor surfaces, I think uh, John McEnroe has definitely proved that he is number one. And Jimmy Connors is proving once again that he can be number one. And so early in the season, we're going to see both players really at the top of their game. Both are playing exceptional tennis, as you will see this afternoon. We're being brought to you by Michelob Light. With a rich, smooth taste you can compare with any beer you like. This is the Michelob Light Challenge, coming to you live from the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. Connors is down three games to nothing. so easily. Fifteen, Jimmy Connors in the fourth game, first set. Connors trailing free love to John McEnroe, but now Jimmy Connors striking the winners. Thirty, fifteen. a much more difficult game for Jimmy Connors to play than this for John McEnroe, uh, Dick, because he doesn't get the, what we call the free points on his serve. Every point he has to play for, whereas John McEnroe gets a lot of free points during the course of a match on clean winners when he serves. Jimmy doesn't get very many free points. He's got to work for every single one. <laughs> Well, you can hear the disappointment of John McEnroe as they talk to each other and talk to themselves. I think you're going to find both of these personalities very entertaining throughout the afternoon also. 40-30, Connors leads. And that's the first game won in this match by Jimmy Connors, who now trails three games to one. In many respects, Owen, this is taking on a very similar start to the matches each had. McEnroe got out to such an easy lead over Ivan Lendl, and Connors had to scrap to come back against Vitas Girolaitis. Yeah, so far, it's been very, very similar. It's hard to figure out just what Jimmy might use as a game plan. I don't know. You can't really tell yet how he's going to play against McEnroe today. When you talk about a game plan, I'm not sure either player at this stage is unveiling his thoughts because it's a five-set final. Every match coming into this particular match, the championship match, was best of three, where maybe you would get into your strategy a little sooner. Mm -hmm. It could very well be um, akin to boxers right now. They're just kind of toying with each other and getting the feel for each other and the style they'll play this afternoon. Right. 
the decisions are much much more easily made uh, by McEnroe because McEnroe has the sort of game that he has and he knows how he has to play. Uh, Jimmy has Jimmy's a counter puncher and he has to figure out as to which side he's going to do most of his counter punching as far as backhand or forehand is concerned. McEnroe's going to play like that. <laughs> Comes to the note, I've never seen anybody with the confidence and and the ability to have pinpoint accuracy that, that McEnroe has. It's just incredible. It doesn't matter whether it's 80 degrees above or 80 degrees below like it is here today. McEnroe still plays like that. It matters a lot to me, though, I know. <laughs> Another ace. Another ace. Third service ace for McEnroe. That moves him up 40-15. Art Layton is the umpire in the chair. Forty thirty. McEnroe off of his great victories in the U.S. Davis Cup win in Cincinnati in December. Well, for the first time in this match, we have a game come to deuce. Another good lob by Jimmy. Got John off the net. You can almost sense the feeling in the crowd of uh, hoping for a, com a comeback for Jimmy. Very good pickup off that overhead. That's alive. Connor's giving away his advantage, and we're back to Deuce. Jimmy doesn't miss a whole lot of backhands like that. He'd be very disappointed in that one. feels like the ball was out. Jimmy feels like it was in, and the umpire feels like it was in. Advantage to counters. And McEnroe is obviously gesturing his dissatisfaction. By the third or fourth set, why, he may be a little bit more volatile than that. Both are keen to win. A tremendous drive to succeed. No! Advantage counters. Oh! Back to Deuce. Jimmy Connors was playing the sword swallowing act with his racket. Advantage Connors. Hey. Oh, he had the right idea. He did. He held it for a long time, held it back, held it back. It looked like it was going to be a lob, and then forced the ball down the line, but missed by about six inches, I guess. Deuce again. He had McEnroe leaning the other way. We've had 
Deuce advantage now three times in this point. 3-1, McEnroe leads, first set. applauding the decision. And for the first time, a deuce in this game, McEnroe has the advantage. That was out. He'll have another. And the game goes to McEnroe, who now leads four games to one in the first set. This is the Michelob Light Challenge coming to you live from the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. One more set, guys? Nah, you guys are just too tough today. For uh, Michelob Light? <laughs> uh, you should have quit. So John ready. McEnroe, who battled back at Duke. Would good friends go at it this hard just for a beer? Consider it's Michelob Light, the rich, smooth taste you can compare to any beer you like. I don't get it. You guys killed us. <laughs> don't blame us. You suggested we play for a Michelob Light. Michelob Light. Compare the taste. Watch out, winter's here, and snow's gonna get you, and cold's gonna get you, and high fuel bills are gonna get you, because you still haven't added more insulation to your attic. So do it now. Get more Owens Corning fiberglass insulation and add another layer to put your house in the pink. See your dealer or contractor. Buy more Owens Corning fiberglass insulation now, before winter gets you. It's 4-1, and that's where we want it to be. Yeah, that one frustrated Jimmy a little bit. That's what you call the easy point, and he gave it to John McEnroe. Yeah, he gave him a free point. It's very interesting if you watch the two players closely, just how effortlessly McEnroe does everything and how hard Jimmy works to, to do everything. 15 all. Connors had do so many times against Carolitis in their three sets last night. A battle at 15 all. Now, 15-30. Connors has to continually come from behind. He has not led in many games thus far. on top now, 40-30. What impact do you think it had on for Connors last night to have to struggle through two hours and 45 minutes and McEnroe basically to walk through an easy match? Well, I think it would have had a bigger impact if 
Connors wins the point and the game, trailing four games to two. I think it would have a bigger impact if Jimmy's match had been second. If Jimmy had played late last night and had a long three-setter, it would have been much more difficult for him to come out and get up this afternoon. But as Jimmy played first and John played afterwards, I don't think it would have very much impact on Jimmy. He's matched tough. All his matches have been three sets this week, every single one. So I don't think it would have affected him very much. He knows he can go three sets and probably feels pretty confident that he can uh, that he can win if he goes three sets. In this case, uh, he may have to go five. Conditioning, of course, this early in the season is a factor. And right. uh, from what we saw from Connors last night, he appears to be in tremendous physical condition. He's got to be very happy with his condition the second week in January to play four three setters and win the, th the three of them against uh, the best players in the world. So he's obviously in good shape. Pretty love. Connor's giving two easy points to McEnroe in this game and obviously showing the impact and frustration of it. Beautiful. McEnroe now is at the net trying to claim that that was a let. Not so. Had he aced it, I don't think he would have been there claiming that. No, it's, it's a, I think that was a good clean shot at you. Let's look at it again. This is the service and the return that Jimmy Connor just pulled back for the point. Well, well we didn't hear anything or see anything, and uh, Jimmy played a clean shot. It looked good to me. So, 30-15. Excellent return by Connor. Great return. I almost thought about that one. <laughs> nah, that one definitely hit <laughs> Jimmy's going to have to play a lot of excellent returns on his forehand because I think McEnroe is going to go there on big points continually. <laughs> Pretty odd. You bring up a good point about the forehand. We didn't see McEnroe attacking that forehand too much in the early games in the set. But last night, it was obvious that that was the tact of Vitas Gerolaitis as he continually attacked the forehand of Jimmy Connors and did so successfully. Yes, uh, John will continue to do that on, on big points. Uh, Jim, Jimmy's already missed a few uh, you know, softer type forehands, and uh, he moves around. McEnroe moves the ball around better than any player that plays the game. Double fault in the match for John McEnroe, and it brings Jimmy Connors right back into it. Four games to three. McEnroe leading Connors in the first set. Of this, the championship match in the Michelob Light Challenge. Connors, I think, feeling a little better right now. Yeah, he got a little reprieve there, a double fault. He wasn't expecting that from, from McEnroe at break point. We can get back and talk about the importance of the seventh game. Ah, we're back to the seventh game again. Yeah, it's it's a very important game because it makes a lot of difference, obviously, uh, whether you're down 5-2 or 4-3. And it was an important game last night for, uh, for Vitas Gerolaitis to break back uh, when Jimmy led him a 7-6 and 4-1 and then 4-2. And it does become a pivotal game. And we're... What Jimmy has to do now is concentrate very, very hard because, as you've probably heard many times before, when you 
get on even terms with the top player or you break through against the top player, the hardest game to win is the next game when you are serving. And Jimmy now has to concentrate extremely hard and make sure that he holds this serve to get back on even terms because McEnroe will be attempting immediate break back. Oh, Jimmy Connors, after breaking the service of John McEnroe to pull himself back within a game at 4-3, owns the service. We're in the first set. by Jimmy Connors. That was a great effort, and once he got to the ball, to be able to play a lob like that completely caught John off guard. John was expecting a little angle forehand, if anything. If Jimmy got to it, John will be anticipating a little angle forehand. You see him move to his left there? He was not expecting a lob. It was a great get and a really good little shot. sudden it seems that Connors is now getting his rhythm back. He didn't have it earlier. He was struggling. He fell behind three love here in the first set. <laughs> 40 30 and Jimmy Connors is a point away from evening this match at four all. Right now, when you have when you have 40 love, you want to keep the ball in play. Yeah, you know, you know, you can't afford to give away three points at this at, at playing at this class of tennis, and that's what that's what Jimmy would consider a three point. Connors has even things up at four games apiece here in set number one. We look around the horizon last night. We're thinking of John McEnroe, who put a tennis ball above the speakers just under the roof of this building in frustration. And earlier in the week, Ian Nastasi hit a tennis ball on the second deck here at the horizon. There have been a lot of personality displays this week, and this has been a very popular tournament. Didn't quite get there, but he couldn't keep it in anyway. Tremendous effort, though, again by Jimmy Connors trying to even get to this ball. A lot of players would just give up on it. Well, that's right. Actually, he was very, very unlucky because he played a great lob, and McEnroe only just got to the lob. John didn't really mean to play a drop smash. All he was doing was trying to get to the lob. There's another lob, which he just got to. One thing that Jimmy Connors doesn't want to happen, he wants... He doesn't want McEnroe to come to the net. He wants to keep McEnroe on the baseline, and I think we're going to see a lot of lobs in this match because he's got to keep McEnroe back where he can't dance with the ball at the net. Right. If he dictates at the net, there's not a whole lot that you can do. There's it again. How about that return anyway? Brilliant play by McEnroe. But he took down the sponsor sign. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be too popular. McEnroe does a great job coming back, but Connors had set him up so beautifully with that lob that we were just talking about. 
He sets Connors up for the slam, and of course McEnroe has absolutely no chance. 15.30. Boy. That was a, a tactical mistake on Jimmy's part, and he knows it. He's climbing around with the crowd now. He's got a great forehand return. Nothing though hit a very high log. And Jimmy knows going right back to the basics that that was the sort of love he should have let bounce. And he tried to hit it on the fly and missed it. And now he's playing with the crowd very good naturedly. Back and roll wins the game and leads 5-4. In set number one. John McEnroe, who has been a roller coaster here in this first set as he opened up with a three love lead over Jimmy Connors. Seemingly, he had everything going his way. He had the momentum, he had the timing, he had everything going as far as his game was concerned. And then Connors battled his way back to four all, now trailing five four to McEnroe. But this man, Jimmy Connors, is showing you why he has consistently been among the top players in the world over the past several years. And of course, the crowd, as you mentioned earlier, Owen, the crowd, while they're enjoying and appreciate both of these fine tennis stars, if there is a favorite, it has to be Jimmy Connors because he is, of course, from Belleville, Illinois, just down the road from Chicago. And I think these Illinoisans feel a little bit of pride in the home state product. Yeah, I think I think you can sense in the crowd a, a definite feeling of, of uh, wanting Jimmy to do well. I think they have a lot of hometown feelings for Jimmy, and uh, uh, I think they, they would like him to, after last year, like him to play very well today and do well. Um, I think it's amazing, even though nothing though plays the odd loose game from time to time uh, and plays the brilliant game from, from time to time. It's incredible how many times when you're watching a match you see the score go back and forth, and then you always see a situation like this where McEnroe's like one game up and the other guy's serving to save a set. And he plays a boom. There's the free point. That was a free point. He wasn't happy about some people moving in the crowd then. He didn't like to be in their shoes. That's a real good tactic on Jimmy's part because if he drills that forehand, it really doesn't matter where he drills it. McEnroe is so fast. Jimmy is so far back in the court that McEnroe is going to pick it off. And that was a very good lob. Remember, it was a year ago that these two players met in the finals of the Michelob Light Challenge, and it was straight sets to John McEnroe. Beautiful. Something we haven't seen too much, however, you saw Jimmy Connors come to the net. He's been content to stay back, except when he's had to come up and play some of those cut shots at the net from McEnroe. <laughs> Need I say more? Huh. Self-explanatory, that motion, I think. Oh. 
So Jimmy Connors, he's battled back, and we're at five ball. Jimmy got a little help from the top of the net then. McEnroe was in on the net and picked the backhand, and Jimmy's cross court backhand just clipped the top of the net, and McEnroe couldn't volley it. Connors will graciously accept the help. Yeah, he'll take that any time. Five all. To it. Now you're seeing what you might expect from two players of this caliber that you're not going to see very many service breaks and they're going to be very, very instrumental in who wins these matches because they pretty much can control play on their own serve. 40 love McEnroe. In fact, it was decisive in the Garolitis Connors match because both were able to control their service. As I recall, there were only four service breaks in the entire three sets. Yes, at, <clears throat> at this stand of the tennis, on this pace court, on a reasonably fast court especially, it's very, very difficult to break serve consistently. On a clay court, it, it's uh, many, many more breaks during the course of a match. But indoors on a fast court, it's tough. So McEnroe wins game number six. It's 6 5 in the first set. This is the Nickelodeon Light Challenge coming to you live from the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. McEnroe came in across court, which opened up the angle for Jimmy. Now, McEnroe's got to do all the work, and he just can't do that much and cover that. If he comes in down the line, then he cuts out the angles, and that makes it difficult for Jimmy. I think as far as a game plan uh, with McEnroe, as you say, Ma McEnroe will be attacking Connors' forehand. I think Jimmy's game plan is to keep him back as much as he can and live as whenever he has to.
kicks out. <laughs> that was a beautiful play punt by McEnroe. Beautiful lob. Now, this volley is a little bit lazy. If you watch closely, he doesn't really get down to it like he normally does. You see, he didn't bend his knees, and he just kind of lazily hit it into the net. It was kind of a little sloppy. On the other hand, a great effort by Connor to come back and play the lob at the baseline. It was. It was a great shot for Jimmy to get back and get it. And we're at six all. This is the tiebreaker. 12-point tiebreaker. Mm. One nothing McEnroe in the tiebreaker. Each will serve twice, then change serve. That was a good serve by McEnroe because he took something off it, rather like a pitcher's changeup uh, in baseball, and Jimmy was way out in front of it. And that's just another little addition to McEnroe's game. His change of pace is upsets beyond board. One run. Wow. The out you heard was that gentleman. In the semis in both matches last night, the players were asking the linesman to bark their calls louder, and it drew several rounds of laughter from the crowd when we heard the linesman at the top of his lungs screaming. <laughs> they are trying to satisfy these championship players. Two run counters now in the 12-point tiebreaker. Dick Jimmy's played four tiebreakers up to now in this tournament. I played three tiebreakers. This is his fourth. And he lost one to Elliot Telsha earlier in the tournament, but then he won one against Feedback, and then he won one last night against Gerolitis. So he's got a good record in this tournament, at least, in tiebreakers. by Jimmy Connors, and he barely missed on the baseline. got away from Jimmy Connors. He had control, and then all of a sudden on that lab, he lost control and had to play it back to McEnroe. And yeah, McEnroe's left-handed, and he makes the ball spin away to Jimmy's left, and Jimmy almost was there, and then the ball cut away off the court and couldn't quite control it. 3-2, McEnroe on the timebreaker. They change hands now. Oh, and we're seeing exactly what we expected. Yes, you're not disappointed, are you? Sometimes when you you work up to a full uh, a full tournament, the finals anticlimactic, and something like the Super Bowl in the football occasionally, but uh, not today. It's the final is every bit as good so far and close as we expected. Well, and you're seeing the first time in 1982. McEnroe and Connors facing each other, and this uh, match will be repeated many, many times throughout 1982. They're going to reach the finals against one another, you can believe, in many tournaments. All around the world. Comes up 4-3 in the tiebreaker. Dick Carlson with Owen Davidson from the Horizon in Chicago. The live finals of the Michelob Light Challenge. Jimmy's got himself into a situation here where he would love to get just one of these points. If you get one of these points, the pressure immediately goes back onto McEnroe. Oh. He tried to come down the line. He knew what he wanted to do, but he couldn't get it up over the net. And we're at 4-4 in the tiebreaker.
22 year old John McEnroe. David right back, and it's 5 4. <clears throat> that puts the match to set now on, on Jimmy's racket. In other words, Jimmy now has two serves. If he wins both the points, he wins the set. So he's got what we call a mini break by winning that last point. He, he's a break up in points. He didn't want to lose, obviously, a point that significant. Now that puts him back on equal terms now as far as service is concerned. Five, five. Jimmy made a good move then. He hit a, an extra forceful backhand, realized that he hit it a little bit better than maybe he expected, and immediately started to move in at the last moment. And that caught John's eye, and he floated the backhand wide. McEnroe has the serve, and all Jimmy has to do is win one of the next two. Oh, you heard him. Good serve by McEnroe because he nearly service aced. He gave an awfully hard serve for Connors. Very difficult. 6-6 six, six in the tiebreaker. Well, you can't go any farther than this in a set, can you? Now, this is, uh, this is good tennis and extremely close. Imagine if we had the open-ended tiebreaker. <laughs> we may go on forever. And these two guys would never finish. Seven six McEnroe. It from where he was standing, it didn't look like it was out. Needless to say, from where Connors was standing, it looked like it was way out. 7-7. Seven, seven. That's Watch it again. I think we might be able to see here. Uh, to me, that spoils the game because that, to me, that ball was out. And there's no way John could see that ball from where he was. Jimmy knew it was out, and the umpire called it out. And there's no necessity for that, I don't believe. nearly an hour long and we're still in the first set. Seven Connors. 
what happens then, because just they, as they go along like this, if they go along like this and they both hold serve, what happens is alternatively, uh, each player has a set point, but it's on the other guy's serve. Like, for instance, now it's Connor's set point, but it's on McEnroe's serve. McEnroe wins the two points, then it reverses. Looked like Jimmy was a little bit undecided as he came for that ball at the net. Watch again, as he charged the net, it just looked like he hesitated for an instant, not knowing exactly how he wanted to play that shot. And of course, you can't hesitate. No, that was a big point. That yeah, one did. might come back to haunt him. That one. That was like a, a missed extra point in football. You may remember that one later on. And the McEnroe gets a little help from the net. Yeah. Jimmy had two helpers there. Yeah. And I'll take that one right there. Yeah, and you're going to become a profit here as we watch this now. Watch as it comes over the net. And of course, Jimmy was going to be there to play it. That was just enough to throw it off. And we're at set point to McEnroe, McEnroe on Connor's serve. Right. Some time to get a free one. Oh, oh. They have to change ends now, Dick. Again, Jimmy's forgotten, but I think McEnroe's remembered. 9-9 nine, nine in the tiebreaker, set number one, best out of five sets. And when you have the world's number one and two players facing each other, you don't expect anything else but this kind of thing. <laughs> Doesn't get much closer than this, does it? Well, it might be, at least in the eyes of those Jimmy Connor fans in our audience, it might very well be an example of how close they feel Connors is to being number one. But it's an eyelash between number one and number two. And on any given day, number one and number two actually can be worn by either player. McEnroe goes up 10-9. Yeah. That was a, by winning that point, that was, the, again, the mini break we talked about. And uh, John now has set point back with his own set. So he's in great shape right now. He figures he should win the set right here. He did. 11-9 on the tiebreaker. This is the Michelob Light Challenge coming to you live from the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. He's now got to dig in and really consolidate his position and try and get a good early start in the second set because... Jimmy gave uh, John McEnroe a little bit of a start in the first set, and he doesn't want to do that in the second set, or he'll find himself down two sets to love. So now he has to dig in and make sure that he consolidates his good play by at least staying even or trying to get ahead at the start of the second set here. Game one, set number two, 15 all, Connor serving after an extremely exciting set number one, won by McEnroe, 7-6 on the tiebreaker that won 11-9. McEnroe has been distracted several times by the audience.
Once again, Jimmy knew what he wanted to do, but he wasn't able to execute. Just couldn't pull it around, yeah. I think a lot of the people are just standing up and moving around off that long first set just to see if they're still, uh, their bones are still moving in this cold, cold weather. And, uh, of course, as soon as somebody stands up, John McEnroe notices that he's very aware. Having said that, now Jimmy's seeing people moving. They're very aware of people moving. There's a local television cameraman who is being told to move. Smart play by John McEnroe. He showed tremendous patience, did not take that shot in the air. He elected to let it bounce to set the shot up better. And of course, he won the point, and it's now 15-40. Right, that's a very good lesson for young players. Out. 30-40. Of course, we're still at break point. Yeah, this is not what Jimmy wants to happen. He doesn't want to fall behind at the start of the second set, as he did at the start of the first set. because McEnroe leaves one love here in the second set. Now, this is the championship match in the Nickel of Light Challenge. And John McEnroe has been playing very consistently here, despite the fact that when he got out three love in the first set and lost it, he showed really no change of temperament. He was able to maintain his cool and play Jimmy Connors, who was charging to get back into the match, and very calmly opens up with the one love lead here in the second set. McEnroe currently rated number one in the world in both singles and in doubles. And you don't see that very often. It's been a long time. Who was the last player who was number one in the world in singles and doubles? Do you recall? I, I honestly... I want to say it was Tilden. I, I think doubt, it was all the way back to Tilden. I doubt very much whether there has been a number one in the world in both singles and doubles on the computer since they've had the computer. I'm not positive of that fact, but I think that um, at one stage... At one stage, uh, in the early 70s, John Newcomb was probably considered the number one singles player in the world, and he and Tony Ropes, the number one doubles team in the mm -hmm. world. But that was before the computer. Of course, a lot of the top players don't play doubles now, either. Bjorn Borg doesn't play doubles, and Jimmy Connors very seldom plays doubles. I think that's to John McEnroe's credit that, that he does play doubles, and uh, he uses his, uses doubles as practice. I think back to the early 70s, uh, one particular year, 71-2, when Stan Smith was winning at Wimbledon and also uh, how he ranked in doubles. At, well, it might have been a time when he would have been ranked number one yeah. for a short time in both. He... he uh, he won Wimbledon back in the early 70s, and he and Bob Lutz were one of the top doubles teams um, in the world. Although they, I don't think they've ever won Wimbledon. Beautiful. Nowhere to go, but it was a great return. 30-15. McEnroe leading game number two with a one-love lead, second set, after winning the first set. So to say, and there's a good example of how that left-handed cut serve from McEnroe hooked in just inside the corner of the zone for the service ace, his fourth in the match. It's like a snake, the way the ball winds around the corners.
again attacking for what he wanted to do on the passing shot. But wasn't able to keep it in. McEnroe now leads two games to love, second set. Jimmy is short forehand, so Jimmy some pretty important points, isn't it? He's beginning to show his frustration. He had quite a dialogue with the umpire in the semifinal last night. Prize money one hundred thousand dollars. Second place sixty thousand. Club thirty. We needs to dig in here, otherwise this set's going to turn into a. Wrap if he doesn't uh, come back in this game. Fifteen thirty. Both players talk to themselves. They give themselves pep talks during the match. showed a little bit more of his artillery because you saw him cut to the backhand. You saw him take the forehand for topspin. When he makes that cut on the backhand, the ball just seems to gently float. Yeah, well, it doesn't, doesn't only move with underspin, but it looks as if it was yeah. topspin, so the ball actually breaks away as you saw off the court, away from his opponent's racket, away from Jimmy's forehand in this case. So that's going away from Jimmy's forehand when it hits. He missed. Back in the lead, 3 love in the second set. We're being brought to you by Michelob Light, sponsor of the USTA Michelob Light League Tennis Program. This is the Michelob Light Challenge coming to you live from the Rosemont. Open with a serve that he intended for service ace as he slammed one right to the inside corner on the forehand of Connors where he had aced earlier, but still was able to get the winning point. McEnroe playing right now near flawless tennis. He is He's playing almost with good perfection right now. Here's the example of what we're talking about. I still can't help but think, Owen, that that very emotional match that Connors had with Garolitis here last night that ran for almost three hours is showing a little toll. Another ice. Five service aces for McEnroe. Six service aces for McEnroe. McEnroe had six aces against Ivan Lendo in their two-set match last night. McEnroe a loser in a preliminary match to Jose Leclerc. Connors is 
beginning to struggle a little bit. It's 15 all. There's the score. McEnroe, four loves, seven second set. Hmm. Right handed forehand. See that, Dick? <laughs> Good on both sides. Thirty fifteen. Actually, when he plays social tennis with his wife, that's the concession. He has to play <laughs> right-handed. Again, that's the second time. Jimmy's going to want the referee on this one again. First ball. <laughs> Back and row. Complained from a game cross court on a line call that was as far from him as it can be. He had done it earlier in the first set. See, what's happened, Dick, is that once again the umpire has made a correction. In other words, McEnroe was concerned about the call, and the umpire in the chair is now correcting the linesman's call. Jimmy is not happy about that at all. He's a man score at 30 all. He wants a lead play on the point because it was a, he's saying he's correcting the point. Jimmy Connors embroiled in an argument over the left call by the umpire. Meanwhile, John McEnroe, hands on hips, waits for it to be settled. Now the umpire's giving Jimmy a warning for what Jimmy feels like. He feels like he's in the right. He feels like that the umpire in the chair should not have corrected the linesman decision. And uh, Jimmy's getting close to packing up. <laughs> his bag and pulled out his glasses. <laughs> 30 seconds. Uh, I think that they need the referee. Um, they need him quickly. Get the referee out here. There you go. Jimmy just has agreed with you. Fire has just penalized Jimmy Connors. I can't understand, Owen, why the referee has not appeared. Uh, I think he's coming now, Dick. He's coming onto the court now. He just made a move. He's about to come out now. Jimmy's pretty well dug in. Jimmy is, is feels like he's in the right on this one, and uh, 
I think they can penalise him as many times as they want. He, he's not going to go out until he gets, not going to go out and start to play again until he gets the referee out there. Here comes the referee now. Well, consider now that the umpire is a local official, an unpaid official, a volunteer for the tournament. Art Layton is the umpire. The referee, of course, oversees all rules of the match. Once again, we have a situation where John McEnroe hit a backhand from way down the other end of the court, which was pulled out. And Jimmy Connors felt like the ball was out. And the umpire in the chair has overruled the linesman and corrected the linesman. Well, they're still discussing it. This is the Michelob Light Challenge coming to you live from the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. and look at the controversial play. It's going to be very difficult to see because as as uh, yeah. Jimmy hits the ball, yeah. Yeah. as the ball hits the line, Jimmy covers up and hits a backhand two-hander. It's going to be very hard to see. It looks like it was just outside. So now we've got to, now we're going to have a problem to find out what the score is because um, the umpire has penalized. Jimmy Connors is back on the court after the resolution of the argument. 30-15, John McEnroe is not going to like the call of 30-15. That means that they have withdrawn the penalty. Uh -huh. It was 30-15, then they penalized Connors. Oh, Nothing else oh, 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 oh. is going to complain. They penalized Connors to make it 30-all. Jimmy Connors is just throwing the balls in the air. Now both will come to the table. And Jimmy Connors will sit down, and John McEnroe puts on the gear. It looks like both players are going to leave the horizon. <laughs> Maybe we'll catch that play. 30-15 on the scoreboard. The referee has come over now to talk to John McEnroe to explain the circumstances. And what they have done is they have reversed the decision to some degree. Not the initial call on the left, not the initial dispute over the line, but they have withdrawn the penalty to Jimmy Connors, which, of course, now has upset John McEnroe, who would have been at 30-15, Connors with the 30. And when they penalized Connors, it became 30-all. Now, McEnroe, who won set number one, 7-6, leads set number two, four, love. And all of us might care that there's $40,000 difference in prize money on the line, but that hasn't entered the thoughts of either McEnroe or Connors right now. No, the money has nothing to do with it. As far as uh, Connors is concerned, the ball was called out and it should have remained an out call that the umpire should not have overruled him. This is as far as Connors is concerned. I think what we're seeing down there is McEnroe is being addressed by the referee who is standing just out of your screen. In a court of law, we might be seeing a little plea bargaining going on here. Well, once the umpire, after talking to the referee, once the umpire and the referee made the decision to let the call stand in favor of, of Jimmy Connors, uh, then, of course, John McEnroe felt like that Jimmy had argued his case and won what, what he feels was a, an unfair case, and so he's not going about to stand, not about to stand for that. Well, the thing that McEnroe was, I think, most unhappy about is after all was said and done, they had awarded a penalty on the play to Jimmy Connors that brought the set back to 30-all, brought the uh, game back to 30-all, and when they announced that they withdrew the penalty, in other words, a concession to Connors in the argument, then McEnroe was upset, and I'll be honest right now, Owen, I don't think anybody can win now. They can't make a decision now at the table allowing anyone to win. Well, all players and officials stay at the Higher Regency O'Hare's 
active and exciting as O'Hare International Airport, yet offering soundproof and elegant rooms and suites, the best to be found in the Chicago area. <laughs> Jimmy Connors is going to play with one of the ball kids. Well, that's a... <laughs> he says, you go get the ball. Now we're looking at playground tennis between a ball boy and Jimmy Connors. All Connors really wants to do is stay a little loose. Well, as well as put on quite a show here for a sizable crowd at the Horizon in Chicago. It might have fossiled it now. How can it possibly be 30-15? I don't understand that. Are Jimmy Connors and John McEnroe uh, what you would call friends off the court? <laughs> no, I, I would say that there's a lot of intense rivalry between both Jimmy and uh, uh, John. The, the top players, you must remember, the top players uh, spend a lot of time together socially uh, playing exhibitions. They go around the world playing exhibitions, so they know one another very well, and they are good friends. Uh, by virtue of the fact that they are together a lot. They have to be good friends. But there's intense rivalry between them. Uh, just as there's intense rivalry between McEnroe and, and uh, Bjorn Borg and Jimmy Connors and Bjorn Borg and Vitas Gerolitis and the rest of the guys. Well, it'll stay at 30-15, and McEnroe has lost his argument. Connors has won his. Now let's see what McEnroe does trying to come back to win the game. is enjoying this display, but needless to say, the tournament officials and the umpire are not enjoying this at all. That's the game, the Connors, who has his first game in the second set, trailing McEnroe four games to one. So we've seen an awful lot of entertainment, and we have two very unhappy tennis players right now. Players' ground transportation have been provided by leader AMC Jeep on Cicero Avenue. Imagine this now. They are waving up into the stands. The ball boys are asking for somebody to give that ball back. Uh, they won't give the ball back, and that makes it difficult in tennis. In, in baseball, that's fine, but in tennis, it's difficult because the balls are all supposed to be the same. Uh, they come out of the can at the same time, and uh, so they, obviously, if, if we, they're short a couple of balls, the other ones are going to get worn much more quickly. I think the young lady concerned thinks that she's got herself a souvenir, and that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> She may come down later, and John McEnroe will autograph that for her. All right. Yes! Well, we have everything we could expect when a Connors McEnroe matchup comes about, including the sidebar activity. Um, in London, I think it was, Dick, in, in November or October, I think it was November, John McEnroe led Jimmy Connors very easily. Um, two sets to love in the, in the tournament at Wembley. Mm -hmm. There, he got a little help. 15 all. I'd like to take a moment to apologize. We understand part of our network to, this afternoon is having audio, audio difficulties. Please stand by. We're working on this problem right now. Thank you. That loud, beautiful. Look at that. That's 
still, before this match is over, may be the main weapon of Jimmy Connors. There again, Connor is able to get McEnroe to play it off of the baseline. Didn't allow him to come to the net. Connors has opportunity at break point. 30-40, still break point. Jimmy Connors has picked up his second game in the second set, trading four games to two, and he broke John McEnroe's service to do it. They have a very unhappy John McEnroe right now. Possibly play a point like that unless you are in absolute tip-top physical condition. McEnroe had to slam on the brakes to make the play. Connor's the same. Brings it back. He's going to have to do it again. Beautifully done. 15 love, Connors. McEnroe. He's changing rackets. Changing rackets. I guess he broke a spring. Maybe he didn't. He's just trying to wrap it anyway. It was a breather at the same time. That was quite a rally. He may have taken the wrong racket out when he, uh, after the stop, when he pulls rackets away. All players have a favorite racket or favorite rackets, and he may have taken out one that he didn't feel like was the right one for the for the court conditions. We haven't talked too much about this service, Owen. It's very, very fast indoor service is laid down on the floor here. And uh, kind of a rubberized texture, but frankly, not an awful lot of green to it. No, it, it, uh, it's an older course. Uh, it's not a new course, and uh, it's gotten faster as it's been used more being on top of the basketball court. The, the ball skids off. And also stays low, which means that if you can get to the net, it's very difficult for somebody to be able to pass you because the ball bounces so low and it's hard to get up and over the net. Connors continues to battle John McEnroe. 40-15. Now an opportunity to pull back 4-3. Forty 
30. For example, Jimmy has been having some difficulty at hitting his winners when he has the opportunity. Yeah, he worked the ball around the court beautifully in that point. Set the easy one up and missed it. the same shot. After being up 40-15, they've now come to Deuce. That shot, uh, Dick, and some of the other ones that he's been playing, is that one he came over the top of the ball just a little bit, and he got a little bit of topspin on it. Those other ones, he comes underneath it and slides the racket around the side of it, and it's a favorite shot of his, but sometimes he loses control of it a little bit. Jimmy Connors wins game seven, throws four threes, second set. We're being brought to you by Michelob Light with a rich, smooth taste you can compare to. This is a pivotal game for Jimmy Connors. Remember now, he was down for love here in the second set. He's won three consecutive games. I think John McEnroe would not be, you know, the great champion that he obviously is if he didn't have some sort of control over his temper or temperament, even though he does lose it from time to time. And I think he, he he's well aware how important this game is now. He's got to settle down and hope that Jimmy doesn't play a couple of great shots, try and consolidate his, his break. John McEnroe, you're going to the net with maybe the best net player in the game. He and Borg are both phenomenal, but McEnroe, when he comes to the net, just seems to have the uncanny ability to control the ball. Back at the net, McEnroe, as we're in game eight, second set. McEnroe leading 30-15 in this game over Connors, and he's won a point at the net, then he's buried one at the net and given it right back. Connors obviously now buoyant from his three consecutive victories here in these games. But McEnroe not giving in, needless to say. John's unhappy with the call or with himself. There's the answer. No, he's, he's unhappy with the call. He's unhappy with the call. He, he felt like he hit it out as soon as he hit it, and then I think he felt like it landed on the line. That's it. That goose. Now the pressure's kind of swinging back a little bit. He won that game at 40 15. Interesting point. This is only the third time in the whole match we've gone to Deuce. And the last two games have gone to Deuce now. Ah! And there is the 
famous Jimmy Connor backhand. That's just what John McEnroe didn't want. A juice, four, three. It was a beautiful shot. A little bit short to serve, and Jimmy stepped around it on his two-hander and just flailed at the ball. Jimmy shaking his head. John knows he made a mistake. Advantage Connors. Ooh, service ace. Beautiful throw. Seven aces now for McEnroe. Connors has none. Last night against Carolinas, Connors had no service aces in three sets. to go out. Advantage back to Connors. That was a good move on Jimmy's part. He hit a slightly better forehand than he had anticipated again. Sometimes you do that. And immediately he saw that he had an extra good shot. He immediately started to come to the net where he hadn't planned that. That wasn't part of his plan. had a tough afternoon. <laughs> Beautiful. And the game to Connors. He's won four in a row now from John McEnroe in the second set. Work for all. That time Jimmy got up to the short forehand and played the little angle that McEnroe was looking for before. McEnroe was there. He, he knew where Jimmy was going to hit it, but he didn't control the volley. He actually put it played a top spinner, which is not. Well, just keep in mind that it was 4-1 McEnroe when we had the argument at the umpire's chair that proved to be a victory for Jimmy Connors, and it turned his game around, and now we're 4-4. McEnroe has not won a game since the argument. No, John's thinking about that right now. In fact, I think it was 4-0 when they had the argument. And, uh, you're right. And John's, uh, and it was Jimmy's serve, and they got Jimmy 30-15 on that, on that serve, which he eventually won. And John's giving that a lot of thought, and very soon the umpire's going to penalize him. McEnroe in a state of meditation. I'm not sure I'd call this a show by John McEnroe. I honestly believe that, that he's sorting out all of the events that have occurred in the last four games. What has happened to my game since the argument at the chair? Pretty grim look on his face right now. See if this changes his strategy. Pretty hard to change your strategy when you've got a pinpoint corner shot like that. That was a great shot. Very upset right now. I mean. Fifteen all. Ah! Connors is smiling. That was a rather late call. It was. Well, not smiling anymore. I think, though, so. you know, as much as anything, while he complains about the line call, he <laughs> just climbed over the net. While he complains is, about the line call. This at McEnroe. That's right.
officials are around. I think what he's really complaining about is the delay that McEnroe had exercised a moment ago. Well, he's certainly been witness to some rather bizarre behavior here. Incredible. In Absolutely incredible. Never seen that happen before. Although, Owen, you have to admit that this is maybe what we're going to be witnessing in professional tennis as the players get more and more confidence in their control of their own fate, their own fortune, their own matches. Connors earlier in the week was well quoted in a local newspaper story about how he feels the players should make their own line calls. The players should be in control of the match. That they don't uh, need to have amateur linesmen. Well, I think I think we are we are definitely heading towards professional linesmen, but uh, I, I don't believe the players can see the ball on the move as well as the linesmen can see it uh, when they're sitting in a chair. Number one, uh, number two. Number two. Number two, I, I think in 1982 and in future years, they'll make the rules stricter and stricter and stricter, and you simply will not be able to do what we just witnessed there. You'll, to do something like that, you'd be immediately thrown out of a match, and that's very costly, obviously. That's right. On the other hand, Owen, the players know this, is that they can take it pretty far because sponsors put up a lot of money for these tournaments. A lot of people have come out today to watch, and they know that the sponsors and the tournament officials, because of the sponsorship, have to go as far as they can in accommodating the players because this is the entertainment that people came to see. That's exactly right, especially in a tournament like this. Jimmy Connors has taken the lead in set number two. Five games before, an incredible comeback when you consider that he was down four love in the second set. He has won five consecutive games from John McEnroe. This is the Michelob Light Challenge coming to you live from the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. An interesting position for the linesman to take on the serve. Getting down as low as he does? Well, not only as low, but so far outside the line, it's difficult for him to make a call on the outside line. The linesman on his hands and knees behind Jimmy Connor. You see him there with the white hat. Look at how far outside the line he is. Fifteen. Connor's battling back into the game. Very responsive crowd here this afternoon. Oh, there's the racket nice control of McEnroe. You'll Beautiful never see touch. a better example. Beautiful touch. He actually controlled himself extremely well in that game because of 30 love. He felt like he hit a serve that was on the line, the umpire called it out late, quite a late call, and he immediately took good control of himself and went quietly back and served the second ball. Five all, second set, and that end of the five game winning streak of Jimmy Connors.
15 love. Well, I hope that both of these players now have settled down to play championship tennis and let the theatricals be moved back into the closet. Yes, there's no place for what went on in the game, in, in any game, but certainly not in tennis. Fifteen all. Been a long match and both of these players battling. We were at seven six and set number one, now five five in the second set. Best out of five. some points as it crawled over the net. That time it didn't happen. It's 40 30. Takes the lead on John McEnroe. Players ground transportation is provided by Leader AMC Jeep on North Cicero Avenue. And the Hyatt Regency O'Hare. Well, that's where the players and officials are staying. As active and exciting as O'Hare International Airport, yet offering soundproof and elegant rooms and suites. The best to be found in the Chicago area. Jimmy Connors has battled back to take the lead. He had trailed 4 love in the second set. Went ahead 5 to 4. Then McEnroe tied it up at 5, snapping the five-game winning streak of Jimmy Connors. Now Connors has rebounded to take a one-game 6-5 lead, and he's in position to win the second set and even the match. those of you who play tennis, you can know the agony of having to come from the right line to the left line and back again. Physical conditioning of these players is astounding. It may become a factor in this match, Dick, if we have a real long match, and we may have a real long one now. Good. That was a touchpin forehand lob, and it was in. Caught John McEnroe creeping in a little bit too close. And that's a shot, as I said, that Jimmy Connors has learned recently, or in the last year, and plays extremely well. Beautiful. There they go, to the backhand of Jimmy Connors again, and paid the price. Well, he's pumped up now. I guess, I guess everyone figured that when he when he jumped across the net. <laughs> Practicing for later, do you think? 
Brady 15. Well, actually, it's not funny because I don't really. I think when the match is finished, Jimmy will really be sorry that he went across the net, no matter how hard he argued or wants to argue for a point. I don't think he'll be happy about having gone across the net. That's out. Dirty 40. Once again, facing set point. A standing ovation for Jimmy Connors, and does he appreciate it? The match is even. A 7-5 winner in the second set. Uh, you'd expect it from McEnroe and Connors. We've said it before, and it may be redundant, but it's true. 7-6 to McEnroe, 7-5 to Connors. We're in the third set. see some good tennis in this third set now. I think McEnroe will settle down. I think we should see some great tennis. Not we haven't seen some bad tennis already. We were just saying that we're going to see them settle down and play tennis. I think, yeah, I think he's real upset with himself, but uh, he knows it's important. It's still a very important match, and... Uh, I believe that was out. That was very close. To give McEnroe credit for a lot of restraint there. Again. Well, as you know, when it doesn't do any good to lose control. No. And these players know it also. But uh, in the intense rivalry and the competitive battle going out on the floor, sometimes it eludes you. like taking candy from a baby uh, giving Jimmy a little short two-hander like that and coming in that was he didn't chip as well as he intended to chip 40 15 oh that's an unusual one for Jimmy Connors he got the winner on his forehand and drilled it in one nothing he leads set number three. This is the Michelob Light Challenge coming to you from the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. With the score tied at two sets each, we pick up the action in the fifth game of the last set. Forty fifteen. That lob, which has been a weapon of Connors throughout this match, continues to work for him. Game to Connors, and it's 3 1, fifth set. I was just thinking about one of the comments you made earlier in the day, Dick. I bet some of those umpires that didn't get didn't draw duty on this match are probably quite happy now that they're not sitting out there in the chair <laughs> after what's going on. Yeah, in both the semifinals and the finals, there have been a lot of close calls, some controversy, a lot of player opinion being expressed. Uh, I'm looking at the, thinking of uh, Mr. Gene Davis, the umpire that did one of the matches last night. 
he's probably disappointed that he didn't get to do the final, but after going seeing what's going on today, I'm sure he's uh, probably quite pleased that he wasn't up there. Certainly he has empathy for Mr. Layton, who is sitting in the chair this afternoon. Definitely. Oh, that time it didn't work for him. Good rally. Good lob from Jimmy. Drive John back. And it's the back end of the net. Those are the kind of mistakes that maybe they wouldn't have made a few hours ago. You know, for this early in the season, their conditioning is superb. Their games are very sharp. Beautiful. Very nice. And it's 15.40. Jimmy's getting up off the floor again. Nothing comes easy for Jimmy Connors. He's a scrapper. Sure. He appears to enjoy it, too. He continually seems to be in that position. Last night in the semifinals here this afternoon. Consider this, that Jimmy Connors, every match he's played this week has gone three sets. Now he goes the maximum in the championship match. He's played a lot of tennis this week. He did. That's out. 34. I guess he just decided he wanted a lot of playing time this week. Well, if he was looking for a week of conditioning, all expenses paid, he got it. That's right. Plus a little thrown in on the side there after the expenses. <laughs> like either sixty or a hundred thousand dollars, depending on the outcome of the match. Can't stand prosperity or whatever, but McEnroe battled back after a large Connors lead and we're a deuce again. The second half of the match, it seems like we've been <coughs> a deuce quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Advantage to McEnroe. Well, when he smells the victory, he really explodes, doesn't he? Does. he? Yeah, that was a beautiful volley. It's a difficult volley, play it with ease. And the game to McEnroe. He leads four games to one in his fifth and deciding set. This is the Michelob Light Challenge coming to you from the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. <laughs> McEnroe and Connors back to the floor. McEnroe leading four games to one in this fifth and deciding set of the championship match in the Michelob Light Challenge in Chicago. An incredible match between Connors and McEnroe. Dick Carlson with Owen Davidson providing the commentary and what a delight it has been for us to be a party to such an outstanding match as we have witnessed this afternoon. Great 
beginning as it crawled over the string. Kyler's leading 15 love in game six, set number five. He has a long uphill battle now. Battling, leading it. 30 love. Played, and Connor is in front of his own serve, 40 love. Jimmy's staying alive if he wins this game and hangs on to his next service game. He's got two more chances to break John McEnroe to get back into this match. After all this time, it's going to come down to two service games. Out. Couldn't keep it in, and it's 40-15. Trading four games to two as he wins the game. Jimmy having some conversation with some front row fans. Uh, McEnroe's service now. Jimmy's going to have to break McEnroe's serve to get back into it. He knows that there aren't too many more chances left. <laughs> nice shot by Connors, but from a technical point of view, you know, we looked at it earlier, Owen, and on a similar play, we saw McEnroe let it bounce before he played the shot. He mm -hmm. had a better chance to measure it, whereas Jimmy, a little more impatient, decided to take it on the fly. Jimmy took that one on the fly, yeah. He came in behind a very, very good approach shot. He hit a good topspin forehand down the line and came in very close to the line. Great effort by Jimmy Connors. <laughs> Terrific oh. effort by Jimmy Connors. Says, give me a little help. My racket. Uh, <laughs> you believe how far his racket went? I mean, he lost control. He's going for the shot. The racket slid across the carpet all the way over the aisle and under the first row of seats. Now, just look at the effort here by Connors. He's on the right. Look at him put on the brakes. Now, this ordinarily, I guarantee you, when I play, I don't even go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, that was a pretty good effort of John McEnroe to run down Jimmy's angle, too. Oh, oh, and he played it. Boy, that was a big shot right there. You could wait a couple of years and not see John McEnroe missing overhead like that again. But when you're getting a little bit tired, sometimes it's hard to get up there. Oh, 
may get a little tired, but that was one way of oh, it. A great return. Great shot by Connor. Shot. Great return of serve, first of all, and then just wild at the forehand. And the crowd just loving every minute of it. Oh, this is a good one. Right. We got the same situation. 15-30, and the umpire has done it again. As well, it's 15-40, in fact. And now the umpire is penalizing him a point, so therefore he's giving the game to Connors. So we've got the same situation exactly. Four games of three. See, by, by hitting that forehand for a winner, it made the score 15-40. Right. And now the umpire is... and row slammed the ball up toward the ceiling. And the umpire... Immediately penalized McEnroe, the point that cost him the game. It's four games to three, and immediately this time they are rushing the referee to the floor. I hope we keep all this tape and film we're using, Dick. We might have to use it as evidence <laughs> to say we were here. We well, saw this spectacular match and this unbelievable goings-on. This match gets the 1982 season underway, and I'll tell you, if this is indicative of the 1982 campaign, it's going to be a whale of a year. See that? There is the That's move called, by McEnroe. That's Ooh. called ball abuse in the rule book. And you can't abuse a ball without getting an automatic fine. And after being warned as many times as he was warned, There's two ways to look at this. One way to look at it is that John is doing this to himself. Yes. He knows the rules. Yes, he does. And the mistakes or the gestures that he is making are coming, unfortunately, at the most critical moments. Each has cost him a game. That's true. On the other hand, you look at interpretation of the rule book, and Mr. Layton in the umpire's chair is really not interpreting it. He is running it by the letter. That's, I agree completely. So those are your options, and you may choose for the side you wish to support. But the unfortunate fact is, is that we have been seeing this great match tarnished on several occasions. So, and I don't know exactly at exactly what point. There is a point in the rule system where the player can be defaulted. And it would be a ludicrous situation after all this if there's another instant a little bit further on down the match and then the umpire defaults one of the players. Now at the umpire's chair, the referee is discussing things with the umpire. Officials are guarding McEnroe for fear he's going to walk again. Well, Jimmy doesn't want to take the point penalty, obviously. Jimmy wants to play the, the, the game out. It's... Ball abuse. Ball abuse is, is hitting the ball into the stands, Ladies and gentlemen, towards the public. The penalty Belt. point is reversed. Let's listen now. Quietly. Score is 50 40. The referee, Bill Kemper, has convinced the umpire, Art Layton, to reverse his call and let them play the last point. We're at 15 40. And it's still 4 2, third set. McEnroe hopes it's not going to be the last point. Jimmy hopes it is. It's not last. Not the last point. Oh. <laughs> 
30 40. You can't blame Jimmy Connors. You want to work for it. No, that's flower abuse. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not in the rules. <laughs> This is the quietest I've ever heard the building. Yeah. Now McEnroe wanted to pump him up. He didn't like it when it got that oh. quiet. <laughs> Third bounce, played at the baseline. So Jimmy Connors, who was up 15-40, after the point reversal that could have cost McEnroe the seventh game, faces Deuce. <laughs> Tell you what, if Connors battles back to win the game, you're going to hear a roar from this crowd. That's for sure. Would the 1982 Grand Prix rule be more tolerant of the... Less tolerant. They're much stricter. Uh -huh. They're much stricter. They, the, the move is to get the, to tighten the rules up, make them stronger and stronger and stronger, and after all the problems. Uh, Beautiful! And Connors has won this game anyway. Four three. After all the problems at the Wimbledon this year, that everybody read about that the, the Pro Council has decided to tighten tighten the rules up. John McEnroe is having a heated discussion with the umpire at the net right now. We don't have him on camera, but. Well, you can see there it is. He's really going at it. He's not Four happy. Hours of him behind us. All right, you have just to calm down. Basically, what John was trying to explain politely to the umpire was that he's out there working exceptionally hard, and the umpire is taking everything away from him. You have to say, though, it was a great show of sportsmanship by Jimmy Connors. Very yeah, much so, yeah. Because he was in support of playing the point and not accepting the penalty, as he was earlier, Both I times. should point out. Right. Both, Both times. times he did not want to see McEnroe penalized. And Jimmy looked a little undecided as to whether he was going to rush that ball and play it or allow it to bounce. Well, he's not real confident on that forehand volley sometimes. He has that eastern grip that we talked about, and he really wasn't sure what he was going to do with that volley. Connors was down three love at the start of this decisive fifth set. Was battled back from three love and four one to four three. Ah! 
John talks to the crowd and gets upset at movement. I think he likes a rowdy crowd. Yeah, I think he wants it. Out. That time he didn't get assisted by the net. Yeah, now the net hurt him that time. If that hadn't hit the net, it might have gone in. But when it hit the top of the net, it carried on out. So it definitely didn't help him. People are just standing and cheering. And... But here you can see there it is. Both Jimmy and John, I think, could do without the arguments, but they certainly love this atmosphere, and they thrive in this atmosphere. They are the center of the arena. They are the center of attention. The they are on stage, the performers. And there are some players who who are not performers. They they just come to play, period, and they back up and leave. But I think that both have the theatrical flair. No doubt about it. Oh, what a volley. Football game. This Got crowd it. is really appreciative. Oh, they called that in. They called it in. 30 15. I don't know if we have a shot that will give you a view of it. Let's look at it again. Difficult to say, but it might have been, might have been right on the baseline. So it looked like. Fifteen thirty. He had a chance. He had it set up. Completely set up. Great effort by Connors to even get there. 40-30. That's a beautiful shot. Good news. They are going all the way. These two men have actually just had a tennis war here this afternoon at the Horizon, and they're going to go all the way. It's their advantage to Connors. This is maybe the sharpest his game has been throughout the entire match this afternoon. Oh, what a beautiful pickup. Oh, incredible play at the net. Jimmy's got to be asking himself, what do I have to do to That's get it right. by him? Because he hit some great shots. Fantastic return. McEnroe picks it up. Jimmy 
nails a forehand down the line and McEnroe volleys it cross court for a winner. Fantastic. After making great shots at the net, he makes a mistake and we're back to advantage Connors. We talked about the need for the break point to break the service of McEnroe. If Connors is to win this set and this match. Very big point now. Taking the lead for the first time at 5 4. Oh, and it's entirely possible that what we are watching this afternoon may be written up in tennis journals as one of the finest matches ever played. Well, I'm, that's, I'm sure that's going to happen, Dick. I'm sure that there'll be a lot of talk about the match, the standard of tennis, of being one of the classics, uh, a lot of talk about the confrontation. As far as uh, Jimmy actually going across the net, which never happens on the tennis court, I think that'll get a lot of play. The fact that Jimmy actually walked across the net. Here we see the break point. Now McEnroe actually has quite an easy volley there, and he mishits it a little bit. He meant to go across court more than he did. And Jimmy was there real quickly and hit his backhand up the line. The winner. But this, this, this has got to be one of the greatest matches I've ever seen. And this crowd showing its appreciation here this afternoon for both of these players, John McEnroe and Jimmy Connors. And don't count John McEnroe out either. He he comes back from worse situations than this, and uh, it's not like Jimmy can serve four aces past him and finish the match off. John will get into every point if he wants to. <coughs> it's uh, still a long way to go. Uh, Connors right now, who was not in the driver's seat earlier, is now because he owns the service with a chance to win the match. Jimmy, just, Jimmy doesn't have the sort of serve where he can just go out there and blister three or four unplayable serves and, and win the match. He's going to win every single point. We've talked about that before. John McEnroe, of course, is well aware of that. He he knows he'll get into every point. Oh, this match is four hours, thirty-five minutes long. Repertoire of shots from both players on that rally. From the cut to the lob, the forehand, the backhand. Phenomenal tennis. 15 all. Once again, Jimmy used that topspin forehand lob to drive McEnroe back off the net. He's used that shot a lot today. the tension in the building right now. The quietest the crowd has been. You can hear the air circulating in the building. Beautiful. Connors now the aggressor. 
He has been reluctant to come to the net, has been very selective when he has come to the net. And here now, when he has a chance to win it, he elected to play the net. 30-15. Well, the crowd is telling the story. We have come at 40-15 to match point. Match point for Jimmy Connors. So many times in the match, it has seesawed back and forth, and there was no way to predict a winner. And Jimmy Connors has the opportunity as the number two player in the world to defeat number one rated John McEnroe. Seven five six seven seven five six four. Jimmy Connors, John McEnroe congratulates him at the net. And this incredible match, the 1982 Michelob Light Challenge, has come to an end with Jimmy Connors the winner in five sets. An incredible match. Highlighted by a superb play by both McEnroe and Connors, highlighted by controversy, and it will be talked about for many, many weeks, months, possibly years to come. And there is a very tired Jimmy Connors. He battled, he came back, set after set after set. And a dejected John McEnroe, whose two sets that he won, both came on tiebreakers, 11-9 and 7-4 penalized once for a point that cost him a game. Almost penalized the second time when they reversed the decision to take the penalty away. Controversy plagued the match involving both McEnroe and Connors. Good sportsmanship displayed by both when both did not want to solve any problems on the court by suffering penalty but wanted to settle it as tennis players. And Jimmy Connors as much as the victory this afternoon has enjoyed maybe the endurance of the tennis match. Executive producer for Concert Productions, Inc., Michael Cole. Steve Lieber also joined us. We want to thank you for joining us this afternoon. This is Dick Carlson. For Owen Davidson. Saying thank you for being with us for this phenomenal tennis match live from the horizon this afternoon. The Michelob Light Challenge has been brought to you by Michelob Light. With a rich, smooth taste you can pair to any beer you like. And by Grecian Formula. Let's you gradually get rid of just as much gray as you want. And Odor Eater, the odor-destroying insoles with an activated charcoal. The winner...